Alright everyone, welcome to another DayZ tutorial. Uh, this, well, to start with, this tutorial is going to be a two-in-one, and so I'm going to show you two things. Uh, the first thing is, we're going to go back um, to my, one of my previous videos. I, well, I say we're going to go back, I'm just going to remind you of it. Um, I did a video where I showed you how to like organise your spawn objects um, a little bit better. We didn't have to have the big list inside your init.c file and we put them inside your mission um, folder. So I showed you that and they would like created uh, .c files. Now um, I've actually moved them into a custom folder and I talked about this custom folder in the last one and I actually said I would do an update um, once I got it sorted out and figured out. Um, so that's what I'm going to do now. Now I'm a little late because this video, well this I figured out a little while ago, it was soon after I created the video. Um, I just completely forgot around making the video for you guys. So, that said, um, let's get on to it. Now, I'm going to treat it as if you followed along through all my other videos. So for any new people that are watching this that have no idea what I'm on about, um, go and watch, start with, go and watch the first two videos on how to use the community offline mode. That will get you started, that will get you to where we are. Um, then go and watch the video where I show you how to organise the um, spawn objects inside your server, how to make the files a bit cleaner and tidier. That will then get you to this point. Um, uh, so yeah, right. Um, and again, I just want to say this is for sort of people that are starting day Z, that are, are new to sort of um, running servers. for people that run big communities and have communities for years they, they're gonna obviously know this you're gonna obviously know this so this is for more your newer sort of people that are just getting into it right so i talked about creating custom folder and that's what i did and we've called it custom objects you don't have to call it this you can call it whatever you want or you can call it the same whatever you prefer to call it as once you create that custom object them in it, I'm um, not in it, them .c files where we had all the objects that was in this file, you need to get them inside this um, object, uh, not object, this custom folder that you created. Um, so if we go into it, you can see I've got all mine there, all the .c files there. Okay, so um, creating the folder is really easy. Um, for me, I just use my host panel. I can just create a new folder, it takes a couple of seconds. Um, so that is, um, but again, you can go and use your notepad to create a folder, um, use FTP program, um, do whichever way you want to do it. But step one, and again, this is going to be broken into three steps. So this is step one, create your custom folder, nice and simple. Step two, is once you've got that folder, which I've just said, is to get all these .c files inside of that. Now again, you need to go back and watch the the two offline vid community offline videos I'd use them and go back and watch the um, video I did my last Daisy tutorial on how you organize uh, your spawn objects and you'll see how I got all these files once you've done that so once you've got all them.c files in there step three is you need to go to your init file and then you need to change so for example if I remove this there right you will have a line so ignore the rest of these custom objects um, from the bottom here to the second line ignore where it says custom objects just focus on this line that I'm highlighting now focus on this line so you'll have if you follow along through my last videos you'll have it where it says this command include current directory mp missions daisy offline dot chinaris plus the two forward slashes or backward slashes then the name of your um custom area okay custom location where your objects are you'll have the name of that file right there now because i've created a new folder the folder is called custom objects and again i repeat you can name this custom folder to whatever you want Mine's called custom objects, so I need to put that in. So where I put that in is at the end of Chinaris Plus. Um, type the two backward slashes, then the name of the folder, um, custom 
Actually, I don't really need that. I'll keep it the same as the rest. Custom objects. You type the name in. If you just called it objects, it would just be, you know, objects. Okay? So, you, you get what I mean. You just need to type... Uh, yeah. You just need to type... Um, add the two backward slashes in, then the name of the folder. And you would do that for every single one. And you can see I've done it down here. Okay. Um, and again, you saw me do that from... It doesn't really matter which way you do it. You saw I went to the end of Chinaris Plus and did it. I could just do it here. I could go to the end of these two. Type custom objects. But then I would need to put the two backward slashes in so it doesn't matter if you do the two backward slashes first this side or if you do it second this side as long as it looks like that or this now as long as it looks like this you've included the uh, the folder name and you got the two backward slashes before it um i think you can even do it with one line so one backward slash i think but i just done two i like to make it look all neat and tidy so I've done it with two. But yeah, and that's the third and final step that you need to do. And again, I keep reminding you, if you're wondering how I've got all this, go and watch them three videos. The two videos on how to use the offline mode. There's possibly three actually on how to use the community offline mode. But I think definitely the first two will be the ones you really do need to watch. And then the one where I show you, which I believe is my last AZ tutorial, it shows you how to organize your spawn objects. If you watch all three of them, you'll get up to this point, you'll understand what to do. Then save it, okay? I'm not saving it because it's already done. And that is how you create one simple folder with all your, uh, your um, .c files, where all your custom objects are, your spawn objects. That is how you do it, in a nice little thing. And if I wanted to add more, if I was like, oh, I want to work on VMC a bit more, um, I would go into the offline mode, go to the VMC area, um, put, add or take away whatever more buildings I want to do, and come back, copy them spawn objects, and replace it in my VMC. Um, I also think in one of the videos, I show you how you add your um let me show you actually let me show you in the offline mode um i remember where it is uh, i think it's there common date c it's easier mission there we go and then if we go open up my init so this is the the file for the offline mode and again the first video shows you how to go about doing all this if i open this up uh, bring it across from another monitor. Right, we've got the old style in it that was in my server. We've got all the objects here. So if I just scroll down, these are all my spawn objects um, that are in that are in my server, but they're also in the offline mode. So when I load offline mode up, it's gonna load these spawn objects. So if I make changes, I can see what is already there. Um, and I can adjust them, I can adjust the positioning, I can remove them, um, and just add new stuff. So it makes it easier to um, work in the offline mode. So when I want to update my server with stuff, it's just easier for me. Um, I haven't figured out a way. I don't think you can. Um, I don't think I can set it up to my server. I don't think... Um, actually, I should be able to. I should be able to create a custom folder. And then... Do the same. Yeah. I, okay. I might work on that actually for the offline mode. Create a custom folder in here and get it that way so I don't have that big list to look through. Um, but because I'm not really in the offline mode that much um, and I've really got no intentions of really making any more changes in terms of custom objects on the server, um, I'm not really focusing on that. Okay. Um, but you can see um, how I work things. I would nice and organized and how it's tidy so that is the first tutorial that's the update on how you get your spawn objects spawn files whatever in a nice little folder nice and tidy and easy for you to work on now the second thing is um discovered this the other day uh you can actually play modded servers through the official day launcher so let's close out my server 
if we go oh, I've got Daisy running right now if we come on wait for it to stop come on um, I might have to close that uh, the, the third party launcher open right if we click play and then play Daisy Right, this will bring up the official launcher. Right, now, I've had a little bit of difficulty joining my server this way. Um, other servers seem fine, and I don't know what it is with my server, with the mod. It, sometimes it joins, sometimes it doesn't. But it does work. Okay, so if you click servers, at the top here, you've got a community tab. So this is obviously where all the community servers are, the, the modded servers, you know, not the official ones. Um, and what you would do is you would find a server. Um, if, for example, let's just do this one because it's at the top. My headset just went off, turn it back on. Um, just click on this one and you would click join. And then it'll bring you up a load of mods that are needed. When it says load, that means you've already subscribed to them and got them in, on your, in your files or, you know, in your workshop. Um, if it says subscribe mod, that means you haven't got it. Now, I'm not going to do it because I don't want to download all these mods. Um, it's like four. I don't really want to download them and install them. Because uh, it's just taking up, you know, valuable space in my hard drive, which I could do with something better, which I don't need to at the minute. But what you need to do is you click set up DLCs and mods and run. That will bring up another window. Uh, with all the mods that you don't have installed and it will automatically install them. Once it's installed, it will automatically then join the server that you're trying to join. So, and when I say it doesn't work on my server, if we click on my server, or sometimes it doesn't and it probably won't this time, uh, my server is called Live to Survive. If I click join, now I don't have anywhere that says I need to subscribe to my server and you know you for your own server you're gonna have all the mods loaded because otherwise you can't join your own server um so i've got them all there if i click select set, um set up dlcs and join instead of it coming up with another window and downloading all the mods i don't need it will automatically try and join the server so if you don't need to download mods it will try and join the server if you do need to download mods it'll bring up another window where it downloads the mods um oh and it's actually working so sometimes it doesn't for mine and sometimes it does. I just find if it doesn't work and if you try to join another server and it comes up with a PBO error, because um, that's what it was doing, it just kept coming up with a PBO error for a mod, thinking that it wasn't reading the mod properly. Um, just try maybe rejoining a few times and eventually it should work. But you can see we've got the countdown and it's going to load into the server. Give it a few seconds. And when we load in, I'll actually be on the coast because I think I've got radiation poisoning. So I'm going to kill myself and then respawn. So again, we're in. We're on my server. Um, yep, yeah, we have some uh, car crash and radiation. So I've got the radiation mod on my server. Um, and that's it. And I am down here on the coast because I'm just going to kill myself and then respawn and just come and get my gear. Uh, just because um, I got radiation because I was trying something without a gas mask. Um, see if I could test the strength of the radiation and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, that's it, guys. And that's how you can join another server through through the uh, official um, DayZ launcher. Now, I still prefer to use the third-party DZSLA uh, DZSLA launcher, whatever it's called. You know what I mean. The third-party launcher, um, just because it joins every time. I don't have any issues with it. Um, so far with the official one, I um, out of about 50 times I've tried to connect and about 5-10 times I've tried to record this video, I've uh, joined twice. Um, otherwise it just keeps failing. So yeah, I um, hope that clears things up and shows you a little bit more. And if you need to know anything else, just post a comment in the comments box and I'll try and get back to you. Um, but anyway, have fun and I'll see you next time guys. Bye bye.